even though your loved one was shot, we want to turn your view away from that sadness and find some hope. Welcome to Face Chicago, I'm Debbie Frazier. Today we're going to talk about the trauma that violence causes and how one Chicago pastor is combating it using a model birth in the country of Israel. Illinois Comptroller Susana Mendoza also visited Israel recently and she has been a champion of Pastor Chris Harris's efforts to serve victims of trauma here in Chicago. Since its establishment as a state in 1948, Israel has been under attack by its Arab neighbors for much of the last 69 years. In border towns, which are most vulnerable to rocket and mortar fire, bomb shelters are everywhere. In fact, in 2014, Jerry Rose, our chairman of the board, was in Israel reporting from one of the regions near Gaza during an attack. Uh, we're in the uh, Ashkelon region um, and it's a, it's a very important region for uh, all of Israel. For example, just down the road is the second largest intel manufacturer in the world. Uh, but it's also one of the most vulnerable areas because we're only about seven to eight miles from the border uh, of, of uh, Gaza. And as a matter of fact, you have to run. In the boy, in the shelter, please. In the shelter. In the U.S., we aren't running from bombs sent over by a neighboring community. But when Pastor Chris Harris of Bright Star Church in Chicago visited Israel in 2012, he immediately made the connection that the trauma from violence experienced by the residents in his community of Bronzeville was not that different from the trauma experienced by Israelis. He determined to use the hard-won experience of the Israeli people to help his community. Thank you both for being with us today. Thanks for having Thank us. Let's yeah, start by talking us. about your trips to Israel. Well, as a matter of fact, uh, my first visit came after conversations at length with Pastor Harris, who's a dear friend of mine, as to his experiences with his visits to Israel. And um, so I've spoken to so many people who have had the, the blessing of being able to go there and experience the country firsthand. And uh, was obviously something that I wanted to do at some point. Um, and I had the opportunity to do this this past April with a group of 18 women, fabulous women from across the country all in leadership, leadership positions. Perhaps we may have had some preconceived notions beforehand, just hearing different stories, seeing what you see in the media, uh, and then actually physically being there and seeing how progressive of a country it is, but also the history, which is so rich and so tragic at times, that you start to realize that that trip for me was in fact somewhat life-changing and um, altered many of my perceptions on who the Jewish people really even are. Yeah, for me, you know, it's been pretty amazing. And one of the reasons we had so many conversations about it is, as a child, I always heard about Israel. Uh, now as a pastor, you know, I'm always teaching and preaching about Israel. Mm -hmm. And what's amazing to me, I was always intrigued um, by this small little place surrounded by so many enemies. And I always wanted to know, how is it that they survive? And many times I would listen to people like um, Pastor Hagee, who always preach and teach about Israel. And so it, that's the thing that will always get me on the edge of my chair when I'm watching television or watching him preach. And so I had the privilege to be able to go on an educational trip through um, the AEIF uh, in December of 2012. And then I had the privilege to go again in February of 2016. And then this year, had the opportunity to go the third time. So it's an amazing trip and I would encourage anybody to go. When Pastor Chris returned from Israel, he had a new vision to develop a center in Chicago that would serve those dealing with trauma. When we come back, we'll talk about how many in the Chicago community, including Mayor Rahm Emanuel, rallied around him to see his vision become a reality. That's coming up after the break.
Welcome back to Face Chicago. Today we're talking about the effects of violence and trauma. Two of my guests, Illinois Comptroller Susanna Mendoza and Pastor Chris Harris of Bright Star Church, have spent time in Israel, a country that sadly knows a lot about trauma. Pastor Harris is also the founder of the Turn Center, which is based on a trauma support program implemented in Israel. You pastor in Bronzeville? Yes. Okay, so you're relating your experience um, to that section of town. That's exactly right. And uh, it's not an easy existence there. No, of course not. The difference between Israel and Bronzeville or other urban communities in Chicago, uh, just think about it, they have an iron dome, right? Missile defense system. You know, where if the enemy sends those missiles over, uh, that iron dome shoots those missiles out of the sky. Uh, but unfortunately, in African-American community or Hispanic community, urban communities where violence is an issue and trauma is prevalent, mm -hmm. we don't have an Iron Dome. So we have to get together and work together and become an Iron Dome but with solutions. you have solutions. a lot of sirens. Absolutely. Well, the interesting thing is, in Israel, they also have 15-second warnings. In urban community, there is no, no warning. warning. Bullets. So they're worried about they're worried about sirens and they're worried about uh, missiles. But we're counting body bags and toe tags every single mm -hmm. day. And then trauma is a big issue. So I'm there in Israel and we go to this place in Tel Aviv, to this place called Natal, Trauma Counseling Center, where those who suffer from PTSD, uh, they go there for counseling or they have a helpline for counseling. So a light bulb goes off in my head. Then it was 1,140 people who had been murdered in Chicago uh, since January of 2012. Now, unfortunately, that number is close to 3,600 people since January of 2012 have been murdered in Chicago alone, not including those who have been shot or wounded. Mm -hmm. And the question that came to my mind was, who does the trauma counseling for those families, whether it be the victim's family or the perpetrator's family. In most cases, nobody. And one of the things that we talked about is what would it look like if we can bring what we saw in Israel to Bronzeville to serve Chicago, create a measurable and replicable model that you can put in other places. But there was a big problem. Black and brown people don't go to counseling. That's right. For four main reasons. Not exclusively black and brown people, but specifically, since those are the folks that we've been able to serve mostly. Four reasons, they don't know that counselor, they don't trust the counselor, they don't think they can afford the counseling. And then number four, most tragically, the stigma. Nobody wants to be labeled crazy, but they still come and talk to the faith leader. So in Israel, the Lord said to me, I want you to identify, train, and certify faith leaders and community leaders who have influence to provide trauma counseling based on the Israeli model. And it's been a wonderful ride ever since then. I'm so proud of them. I, well, and how did you get involved? So I was a city clerk. That's right. And early on in my tenure as city clerk, we became friends. That's right. And uh, I've tried to get to know as many of the leaders of faith as possible in my uh, position as clerk. Prior to that, I was a state representative in the uh, community primarily of Little Village, which mm -hmm. also has its own issues. That's so where you grew well, up? Yes. Uh, well, I spent part of my part childhood of time, there right. and then right. part of my childhood in the suburbs, which, believe it or not, has given me this amazing viewpoint where I understand both sides. I understand what it was like to not be allowed to play outside of my home because my parents literally feared that a bullet would, you know, penetrate our little bodies mm -hmm. um, and, worse yet, kill us. It was a real trauma. And things like what Pastor Harris is working on in terms of working with families who, in fact, feel traumatized. My mother was an example of someone who was traumatized, even in this, what was now the safest of neighborhoods. I can see how mm -hmm. you see both sides. Yep. And you can see the benefit of these individuals receiving care and help so they can get to the other side of that equation. That's so right. We'll talk more when we get back. More with my guests, Pastor Chris Harris and Comptroller Susanna Mendoza after the break. Welcome back. I'm talking with Pastor Chris Harris and Illinois Comptroller Susanna Mendoza about violence and trauma. Pastor Harris is the founder of the Turn Center, which stands for the Urban Resilience Network. So thrilled that you brought this to the city of Chicago. Um, Susanna, in um, Israel, people would say sometimes that trauma that those children experience is not like the trauma here. Mm -hmm. Pastor Chris touched on that a bit, but you experienced it yourself. 
Yes, but it's 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 different, but it's still trauma nonetheless. I mean, the, the actual physical attack per se might be somewhat different. You know, it's a bomb versus a gunshot, or it's um, it's the fear that that bomb might hit you. They actually, there are studies out there that show that people who actually survived a direct hit uh, go on to have less trauma. I know this sounds crazy than people who weren't. Uh, they almost get this air of invincibility sometimes, mm -hmm. right? Uh, versus people who came close to the hit, who are really super traumatized. Um, and and it, it doesn't seem to make sense that that would be the case. You'd think you'd fear for the rest of your life if you experience something that horrible. But you see people in these communities who experience their own type of, of horror every day. Mm -hmm. You talked about sirens, right? So in, in Israel, the sirens are preventative. They're, something happened, but they're trying to warn the rest of the community. In Chicago, those sirens are ambulances after the fact, or they're the sounds of wailing mothers, right? Those are like the sounds that you hear. They're in, different. In each case, you've got children living a life that is not normal. Right. You have children playing in Israel and hearing the siren and running off just like it's part of their day, you know, for a coverage. That's right. And, you know, you have children here, when they hear the siren, somebody they love may have, have died. That's exactly so right. They, they all live with something that they should not be living with as children. On the south and west side of Chicago, here you have an amazing program called Safe Passage. Thank God that uh, our city leaders have come up with this effort to make sure kids get to and from school safely, and we need that. Mm -hmm. But think about the quality of life. Why do we need adults to stand on the street just to make sure that kids get safely to school? What message does that send to the young people? Yes, it provides safety. Yes, it provides employment for adults, and that's amazing. But what would it be like to live in a city where you don't have to worry about any violence or any trauma? So it affects the quality of life. I wanted to add that. Is it not true that in communities like yours, in the community that I lived in, um, you almost get numb to the gunshot sounds? That's right. That's like, right. you know, if, if you hear those same sounds, in Lincoln Park, That's you're right. thinking it's fireworks. Right. Somebody's shooting off a firework. That's right. On the other hand, in these communities, because I lived it myself, and when I graduated college, I moved back to Little Village and mm -hmm. spent 17 years of my life there in a beautiful community, but you hear the pop, 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 mm -hmm. and it's just like, okay, well, thankfully it didn't come into my house, but you're, you're thinking this is happening, and it's, it's not even shocking anymore. People are used to it, and they're numb to it, and that is a problem in and of itself. Mm -hmm. And while the sirens are all day long, the trauma for many folks in the community is lifelong. That's right. And Good that's point. really Great unfortunate. Point. And so th there's something called vicarious trauma. There's even research that talks about the fact that trauma that our grandparents have gone through affects us even now. And if we don't take the time to innovatively, and as believers and as human beings, step up to say, we have had enough, we wanna figure out a way to make sure that we address this issue, then this residual effect of trauma and unfortunately hurting people tend to hurt people, you're going to see this continuous cycle of violence. And that's why I'm really excited about the TURN Center. The TURN Center. That's Talk right. about it. Tell it, us it is an acronym, T-U-R-N, the Urban Resilience Network. Now, what excites me about my trip to the Holy Land is the first time in the Holy Land, uh, when God gave me the vision, I was calling it the BDC, the Bronzeville Dream Center. But when I went back to Israel the second time, I was in my hotel room and the Lord says to me, turn. Well, don't forget, I'm a brother from the hood, so you tell me to turn, I'm gonna look around. <laughs> and so I start looking around, the Lord says, no, go and define the word turn. And so I go and look up the definition. Definition number one of the word turn, to pass to the other side of. Definition number two, to undergo a new development or a change. But definition number three made my spiritual baby leap on the inside. It says, to turn one's attention away from or towards something new or different. And that's exactly what we're doing through this trauma counseling through faith and community leaders. And I'm really excited about that because even though your child passed away, even though your loved one was shot, we want to turn your view away from that sadness and find some hope and build some resilience in each and every individual. It's not just the trauma helpline that folks can call and have somebody to talk to, but we also have trained ambassadors who go throughout the community to schools and community-based organizations organizations or events in the community mm -hmm. and help make sure our community is trauma informed. What's really sad is a lot of people don't even know that they're facing trauma. We say things like, oh, it is what it is. 
or, or mm -hmm. I'll get over it. And people who are insensitive, exactly. They're used to that lifestyle. But we want to make sure that they know what it is, build resilience in them, and give them an opportunity to combat what the enemy would use to take them to a lower level. No, we're not going for that. We're building God's people up. Okay, so I have experienced trauma, mm -hmm. and I think I need help. Yep. How do I get help? You can call our helpline. It's 833-TURN-123. It's really that simple. Pick up that phone, have some courage. And the reason we started with the helpline based on this Israeli model is because the professionals in Israel came over three times to Chicago. Thank God for our friends. Uh, the mayor came to Bright Star and said, Pastor Harris, what are you working on? Mm -hmm. And I told him what I was working on. He got excited, introduced me to Dean Harrison, president and CEO of Northwestern Hospital. Mm -hmm. They sold the seed money to $250,000 to say we want to be a part of this. Reached out to my friends over at the University of Chicago. They said we want to match it, $250,000. Bought our friends to the table the United Way because we wanted fiscal management, we wanted evaluation as well as replication. They came in and been a part of this plan. Now Cigna is becoming a strategic partner. And then I reached out to my friends at the city. When I told Susanna Mendoza about this, she said, we've got to do this. And ever since then, she's been on a tour telling everybody what's going on. The same with Senator Dick Durbin. And people are saying there is a helpline available. There are trained ambassadors that are available. And we're excited about it. That's confidential. right. That's right. It's confidential. You can call. And that's what we wanted to do. Make sure people know that there is a safe place for them to call or come to. And we call that the Turn Center. What do you see the results are being? Well, I think it's important to, first of all, acknowledge that while what he's doing is so the morally correct thing to do, it's also the fiscally sound one, yeah. right? This is what people tend to forget when they think about programs that are seeking to help people, whether it's a social service program or a provider. Oh, you know, where can we cut in a budget? Boom, let's cut there, yeah. right? It's the worst and the last place that we should be cutting. All of these folks, this center, this turn center, the idea behind it is to change people's lives for the better. That's right. I believe that when you have a heartbeat for the most part, mm -hmm. right, I like to think people are redeemable. That's right. And so to just ignore that these problems, like to not actually try to find a comprehensive solution, which turn is a part of that comprehensive solution. You look at who he's partnered with, some of the top uh, think tank leaders That's in the right. world, University of Chicago, you know, uh, Northwestern University, um, some really amazing corporate sponsors. These are not fly-by-night folks who are going to invest one day and then disinvest the next. Right. It's about also creating a culture of trust with those communities so that these are long-term investments that are in changing people's lives, creating a person with greater confidence, uh, creating a safer environment that will lead to less taxpayer investment in things like emergency room visits right. or um, you know, uh, unemployment, having to put more people on the tax user base instead of the tax giver base, right? Mm -hmm. So there is a long-term solution, but it's, a, it's, a sh it's an investment that on the front end, people may not see the return on investment, but I believe that if our neighborhoods, the city neighborhoods who often feel uh, that they've been ignored or that the resources aren't there for them, if they start to believe that they will be and that they choose to not accept the unacceptable, mm -hmm. right? This is a key thing that they need to believe themselves that they are worthy of having right. the best life possible. Right. They deserve it and that they can work with it. And there were people that will work with them to try to little by little get there. Everybody wins. That's right. It's less money from taxpayer that has to be expended right. down the road. Let's look at investing not just in roads and bridges, but in human capital mm -hmm. that has a long lasting and a great return on investment down the road. More when we return. Welcome back. My guests today beautifully represent the church and the state. Pastor Chris Harris is the senior pastor of Bright Star Church located in Bronzeville. He's also the founder of the Turn Center, which offers trauma counseling among other programs. Illinois Comptroller Susanna Mendoza knows all about the personal and financial toll violence and trauma take on the residents of Illinois. She's a strong supporter of Pastor Harris and the Turn Center. Pastor, what are the greatest challenges ahead for the Turn Center? Well, I think a couple of things. Number one, visibility. 
right? We need our partners to tell everybody what's going on. That's why I'm grateful um, to our comptroller because everywhere she goes, she's talking about the turn center. I'm excited and grateful for Senator Dick Durbin, who's on this tour across America saying, have you heard about the turn center? And a lot of people don't realize the visibility is what we really, really need to let people know that this is available. The second thing is partnerships and funding because we don't want to depend on uh, government grants. We don't want to depend on uh, political figures because if the government grant runs out, if the political figure is voted out, then guess what? That need to serve that community is still there. And so we are looking into the corporate community, the philanthropic community, or just folks who say in their heart, I want to help with this violence issue. I want to help with this uh, trauma issue, but I don't know how to plug in. Here is a way for them to plug in. And that's what I'm excited about. And people who want to partner with us, they can go to our website, www.brightstarcommunityoutreach.com. Find out what the work is that we're doing and say, hey, I am willing to give. And I tell people all the time, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Words don't do anything. But when we let our light so shine that men may see our good works, then God will be glorified in heaven. Another thing I often say is say nothing until you do something about trauma and violence because you got to get involved in it. Living in your bubble, being in your safe community, but you're doing nothing. I do believe the Lord is going to hold us all accountable. We have a moral and spiritual responsibility to jump in and get involved. All right. Thank you for being with us. Amen. Okay. Amen. I, <laughs> TLN first became aware of Pastor Chris Harris because Comptroller Mendoza mentioned him at a public event where she was a guest speaker. And today she came a long way to join him on our program to support what he's doing. I think it's rare these days when a public official uses their platform to promote and support the God-honoring work of someone else. I commend Susana Mendoza for how she has used her platform to shine a light on projects like the Turn Center. If you need trauma counseling, call the Turn Center toll-free at 1-833-TURN-123. To find out more information, go to brightstarcommunityoutreach.com. And if you want prayer, call TLN's Care Force. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week.